You're listening to the Loving Your Own Soul podcast, and I'm your host, Britt Olson. Guided by my own intuition, my intention is to deliver genuine conversations centered around health and wellness, spirituality, self-expression, and culture. In this space, I will provide you with real life stories, theories, and inspiring perspectives to help you uncover and tap into your own true potential. I'm so grateful you've chosen to tune in with me on this mindful exploration to living a more fluid life through a deeper connection to the soul. Now let's dive into today's journey. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to the show today. I'm Britt Olson, your podcast host, and I'm truly so grateful to have you here. I was thinking today, so we have a really special episode where one of my good friends, Carrie McGinn, and also current clients, where you may recognize Carrie's name as she came on the podcast almost to date actually a year ago. I believe the episode aired around September 2020. I believe it is episode 23. I probably should have looked that up before I started recording, but somewhere around 23 and we just had such a beautiful conversation just talking all about Carrie's journey, movement, the relationship we hold with our bodies and then we also got into a little bit about Carrie's work that she does as a physical therapist, a yoga teacher, And just so much more. Carrie truly has so much to offer this world. So we thought that it would be really fun to bring Carrie back onto the show to just kind of chat about how things have changed in the last year for her. And then also just how things have shifted since the two of us made a commitment to start working together. If you are not as familiar with me and my journey and the line of work I do, obviously, if you're listening here, you know that I am a podcast host, which I love so, so much. However, I am also a certified health coach, a spiritual life coach, an entrepreneur, energy healer, speaker, and just honestly, an enthusiast of living your best life possible in whatever way speaks to you. So since we've been working together, Carrie and I were talking about it and I was like, let's bring you on the show. Let's chat about like how things have shifted for you. Uh, We go into a little bit about her journey and some of the choices and decisions she's made and just the way that her her life is really aligning so beautifully. So I know that you all are going to get so much out of this episode. I'm really just so excited for it and also so grateful for Carrie for, of course, sharing her wisdom and dropping so much information for us. We talk all about the nervous system, which you all are going to love. It's super fascinating, just even honoring the fact of like where we are in our modern world and the ancientness of our bodies and all the things. And then Carrie actually gets pretty vulnerable about how she's been and where she sits now. And it's really just such a real, just a real approach to number one, where we are as humans, but also number two, just the benefit that really comes from whether working with an individual such as a coach, being in community, the power of relationships, and just the power that we don't have to do life alone. And that is such a gift. And also, as I'm so, (laughs) I just relate so much to it as well. The fact that like being vulnerable and also working with someone or opening yourself up to a community or group of people is also a journey in and of itself. I know that sits just is such a familiar area for me. I've had to work really hard on really opening myself up and just being confident and comfortable in some certain environments and things like that. But overall, this is just such a beautiful episode. I just know that you all are going to love it so much. So once again, just thank you so much for being here. And before we jump in, one I don't want to call it a label title that I forgot to mention is that I am also a retreat host. I absolutely love bringing people together. It is actually a key piece of my human design chart. 
at one point in my life, or actually for several years, I was actually worked in corporate events and marketing and hosted a lot of really high level VIP events. I've since have kind of transitioned that into working with nonprofits and then bringing people together and then really combining my love for spirituality and health and wellness and community have now shifted that energy into hosting retreats, but more specifically, not just any retreat, but a spiritual wellness retreat. So if this sounds of interest to you, if you have been feeling like it is time for you to be in community, meet some of these like-minded sisters and souls and individuals that you've been connecting with in the digital world, which is so special in and of itself, but if you are feeling like you are ready to get out there, get in person, etc., I highly recommend that you check out attending a retreat or just doing something really nice for yourself to just kind of tune out from the busyness of our day-to-day lives, which honestly making that intention and then taking action to actually like spend time with ourselves or tune out our busy schedules, (laughs) that is a feat in and of itself, but it is truly so beneficial. So this coming December, 2021, more in particularly Friday, December 3rd through Monday, December 6th, I will be hosting Experience Magic, which is a three-day spiritual wellness experience down in the Caribbean in Rincon, Puerto Rico. This experience will include accommodations at one of Rincon's top oceanfront villas, full transportation throughout the weekend, and will be centered around the new moon in Sagittarius that Saturday as we release and forgive from the past year while really looking ahead to what it is that we are cultivating and calling in and celebrating for ourselves as we really look to that next level or next version self. So when you think about or feel into this experience, you can just totally feel and envision connection and daily yoga, cacao ceremony, meditation with healing circles, live music, breath work, bonfires, and freedom to dance and express yourself creatively, all the yummy healthy food, and also time to relax and connect with yourself and mother nature and just so much more. I'm honestly so excited. If you want to, I highly recommend going over to Instagram, looking at some of the posts and some of the Instagram lives that I've been doing with some of our wonderful retreat guides who are going to be joining us so excited. So definitely stay tuned. If you are interested in attending, please reach out to me. Again, you can find me on Instagram at the Brit Olson. You can also follow the links in my bio, but I would so love to connect live and in person with you December 3rd through the 6th, 2021 down in the Caribbean. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode with Carrie McGinn. Enjoy, and I will see you on the other side. All right. Well, Carrie, welcome back to the show, first of all. Thank you so much. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah. It's so funny. I was looking back at things and the last time you came on the show was literally almost a year ago this month, which is wild. Yeah. You were episode 23, (laughs) (laughs) which I highly recommend everybody go back and listen to if you're new here, if you're not familiar with Carrie already, but gosh, I mean, since that episode and us like meeting that way, I mean, really the two of us have just become such good friends, which I'm so, so grateful for. We have also starting work, started working together as well, which has been just like such an honor, honestly, just being such a close part of your journey and being able to witness just firsthand how you've been evolving personally, professionally, connecting even closer to the true nature of your soul, just all the things. I'm just so grateful for you and your presence in our relationship, but to kind of kick things off here, I'd love for you to tell the listeners just a little bit about you and your line of work and business for anyone who's not familiar. Definitely. I can't believe that like timing of it all. Cause I feel like at one point it's been so long that I've known you, but also at another point, 
so short. <laughs> that totally. It's one of those kind of mind like, whoo, wow. But yes, so it's been quite the... So I am a physical therapist by trade, a 500-hour yoga teacher, um, personal trainer, I call myself a mind-body coach. I own a small business in the Boston area called Live Good, Feel Good, which is a physical therapy and wellness company. And really what I'm all about is ever changing. I think a lot has shifted for me in this past year, especially since that last podcast where a lot of my ideals, a lot of my values are the same, but they're just, they're presenting themselves in a different way. And a lot of that is just getting to work with you among a lot of amazing women in the wellness space and just diving deeper into what really sets my soul on fire. And really right now, what I'm all about is deep nervous system nourishment, um, time in mother nature, helping my clients, um, my family, my friends, like slow down and myself, I should say, (laughs) slow down and feel good and get back to like the root of what makes each person tick and feel good, whether that be movement or mindfulness or meditation. So really what I do is such an amalgamation of all my passions. And for that, I'm really grateful because it's taken a bit to get there. Mm, I love that. You actually, your business launched kind of right, almost like simultaneously with the start of the pandemic and everything like that. How has that shift been for you? Just as we've been, you know, I'll say in air quotes, getting back to normal life, like what is normal anymore, but just looking in, you know, this kind of like, last year, a year later, how has that been for you with your entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, that's a great question because it's, it's definitely evolved. So I started, I'm putting air quotes as well around this, my business in technically of like August of 2019, but I was also working two other jobs, teaching at multiple studios. I really wasn't giving my business the time it deserved. Um, And then the pandemic hit and I was actually supposed to open a brand new physical location that was like 10 times the size of my original one. My opening date was March 15th, 2020, and that didn't happen. (laughs) But um, I still kept the space. I held on to it. So it's really been an evolution since then. When I first opened, I thought I'd be doing mostly in-person stuff, having people in for workshops. And, you know, I work with Normatech recovery boots and saunas and really being a recovery center to help people heal from stress, heal from athletic performances, things like that. And it shifted the beginning of the pandemic. I was really lucky to have some amazing loyal clients I worked with and we got through the pandemic together. Last fall, things were looking really up and then, you know, things just kind of ebbed and flow and, I'll be completely honest, this summer was probably out of the whole kind of pandemic was probably the toughest in terms of being a a small business owner because people were getting fatigued, but they were also starting to be able to go out and about. And I don't know what else to say besides it was just a really interesting reflection on how where everyone was and kind of how everyone felt, myself included. So um, it was really a struggle, but I took the time to pause and kind of reevaluate where I wanted to put my energy so that I could come into this fall, just really doing the things that feel good and the things that I enjoy and not just forcing things that didn't. And it, that's obviously all still a learning process, but um, it has been very up and down, but I've learned a lot about what I want and what I don't want out of my business. And I'm sure that will continue to evolve as time goes on. Yeah. An ever evolving journey. That is for sure. I'm glad that you brought that up because I feel like we talk just, there's so much around how we felt in 2020 and everything like that. And that's not to knock it. It was, I mean, a year unlike anything, but I feel like the conversation kind of stops. And this year in particularly, like you mentioned, we've been really almost trying to digest what happened and then recalibrating and just our nervous systems, which I'll let you speak to just feels like they've just got to be so shot. So I'm glad that you just kind of brought that to light and thank you for being just so open and honest about that, because I've definitely been feeling that myself. And I can actually say the last like couple weeks, I feel like the veil has finally lifted and it's like that taste of me again. Do you feel that way too? A hundred percent. I don't know if it was, you know, I'm in Boston. So the weather did has shifted a little bit, but also hasn't, but I feel like that helped or just the new energy of, of fall or Virgo energy. I'm not sure, but I feel the same way where it was this, just this shift, but yeah, to your point of, of nervous systems, I think 
you know, to get into like the little bit like science side of it, you know, we were all living in survival mode during the first couple of months of the pandemic. And a lot of people think survival mode, fight or flight, the sympathetic state, which is that kind of like heart rate increase, go, go, go on edge a little bit, that it's a bad thing. And the thing is, it's not bad. Our body is meant to use that state to take care of us, to protect us, to help us survive things like a global pandemic or things like crossing like crossing the street and someone almost hits you like it's the sympathetic state isn't bad but it's meant to help us fight or flight and get through a stressful situation but then we're meant to get out of that stressful situation and not even just the pandemic a lot of our modern life like we're never taking ourselves out of that stressful situation so therefore we're netting, never getting out of that sympathetic state of being of being on edge of being ready to go of uh, being tense you know ready to move pounce and especially with this past year in the pandemic, because of all the uncertainty, because of just all the different things going on across the globe, we were all most likely in that sympathetic state for a long period of time. And what happens when you're in that state for a long period of time is eventually a nervous system does get burnt out. It can't handle it anymore. There's only so much it can do without taking a rest or without taking a pause. And most of us, haven't had that pause and even if we have it, it's been short-lived or so I think that your point to feeling like your nervous system was shot is is totally fair and I think a lot of people are there they just don't know what to do about it or or it feels sometimes like okay I'm losing my mind why do I feel this way like there's no direct threat to me you know like you said we've started to slowly go back to our new normal you know things are kind of opening back open back up things like that so it should feel like oh we should be able to get back after it but if you never got out of that sympathetic state if you never got out of that survival mode and gave yourself time to heal then of course you're gonna feel shot and fatigued and foggy and not like yourself our, our body can only handle so much Mm, yeah. What are some ways that, or just anything that comes to mind or through your recent course that you also have out there, nervous, your nervous system, what are some ways, even something that you do to kind of like help find balance or recalibrate? Yeah, that's a really great question. So my new course, a nourish your nervous system is kind of a six month dive into all that, but, and, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that because it's so fun to do like deep work for six months. But there's also some th simple things like you alluded to that you can start now. And I think number one, and this is a constant practice for me, is slowing down. Whether that even just be like taking your walk a little bit slower, taking your coffee, morning coffee, your morning lemon water a little slower. Things that you can purposely press the slow down button can be really helpful. And that's kind of, I'll, I'll be honest, I think the hardest of all the suggestions that I'll give right now. <laughs> <laughs> Another huge one is being outdoors in mother nature. And that's going to look different for everyone. For me, this summer, I was out in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. And that was a lot of hiking, but like gentle hiking where I could just look up around me and smell the smell the forest and look at the forest and feel the forest and experience it. So being in mother nature and, and fully experiencing it with all five senses is going to be really helpful. There's some amazing research out there on the effects of being outdoors on your body, your nervous system, your overall health. And I could probably go on for four hours about that, but it's so good. And it's going to look different for everyone. Now that I'm back in the city, it's getting out in my garden every day. It's going on daily walks. It's literally touching my plants and talking to them. Um, so anything out in mother nature is going to be super helpful. And along that same kind of realm, getting your feet in the dirt whether, or grass or sand, whatever is close, that grounding effect, the way that our bodies accepts and, and kind of puts off electrons and, and, and neutrons is not neutrons. Like it's going to, it's energy is going to like, it, it's so grounding. And then, so we got, slowing down mother nature, getting your feet in some dirt. And then really the fourth one is finding things. There's a lot of movement that can be really nourishing for your nervous system. And this is what I help in my program, like people really fine tune, but it's going to look different for everyone. So finding movement, whether that be 
walking, lifting weights, yoga, Pilates, even running, you know, whatever it is, finding movement that is serving and honoring your body where it is right now in its kind of nervous system state. So, you know, if you're feeling like you're in that high overdrive, like you're go, 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 you can't turn off, doing a high intensity interval class or going running is just going to feed into that overdrive. But maybe going for a walk or doing Pilates or yoga, that's going to help you kind of shift states. And vice versa, sometimes when we've been in this sympathetic overload state, we can fall off and go into what's called like this this freeze mode where we kind of just like turn inward and freeze. It's called a dorsal vagal state. We can get stuck there. That's commonly where people see things like constipation even or depression or just not feeling motivated. Um, so sometimes for people who are kind of stuck in that state, um, doing things like running or doing things like, like lifting weights to build that kind of strength to, to re-stimulate them can be really helpful. So really finding where you are and, and most importantly, honoring that. I can totally speak to that, especially so for myself, I went through a really hard time this spring leading into summer when I incurred a miscarriage and I was trying to go through my modalities and it was like nothing, you know, like the yoga wasn't working for me. And I was like, I just need something more. And I got that intuitive hit and I could feel myself just kind of lingering on that depressive side and renewed my orange theory membership for just two classes a week. And like, that has been like life-saving to me. Um, so I totally see both sides of that for sure. Yeah. And I think in terms of movement, that, that's, that's so beautiful because you took that action to also honor where you were. Because when you're in that healing journey, sometimes it's like, oh, let me just be gentle with myself, which is totally what you need to do at some point. But sometimes you do need to take the opposite approach and like dive headfirst into something and, and, and really push yourself. And I think it's what I've struggled with in the past is having a specific exercise routine that I follow, like I'm a planner. I'm a type A person. I do love schedule and structure. So there's a small part of me that wants to be like, okay, on Mondays, I'll do this. On Tuesdays, I'll just do this movement. On Wednesdays, I'll do this movement. Because for the sake of progress, you know, I love strength training and for this, and I have a background in that. So for the sake of progress, like you want that structure, right? But for the sake of my nervous system, I've just had to let go of that and be like, okay, we're going to have to really listen to where we are this week, where we are today and honor that whatever I choose is, is, and I, if I tune into that inner intuition, that inner knowing that it's going to be exactly what I need on that day. And that's, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. It is so hard to that exact point. Just a real time example from, I think the earlier part of this week while we're recording, I had booked my orange theory class for Monday morning. I was super excited to move my body, get into my body. And I've been feeling also like, again, with changing and listening to your body while I was on the drive to orange theory, suddenly like things shifted. And I was like, it wasn't that I didn't want to move. I definitely wanted to move, but I was like, I don't want to be in a building right now. And this kind of speaks to what you were saying about nature earlier in our nervous systems. And I was like, I just want to be outside. But I was like, no, if you don't go to class, you're going to get charged the $10 late fee and da, 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 da. You said you're going to do this. And then I was like, you know what? No, I want to go run around and walk outside. So I switched forgo the $10 late fee. And I had a beautiful morning and it was exactly what I needed, but those decisions, it takes a long time in the process to get there though, for sure. A hundred percent. It takes practice and it takes like forcing yourself to do something that you really didn't want to do and being like, Oh yeah, this sucked <laughs> to then be next time, be able to be like, I should listen to myself. <laughs> totally. So speaking of nature this summer, you spent a lot of time in nature, especially for someone who was living in the is living in the city. You, I mean, we all know, you know, we spent a lot of time indoors and just everything like that the last year and a half, what was kind of that main deciding factor for you? Because as a business owner, kind of transitioning back and forth between city and nature, I'm sure that must've been just difficult this summer, but what was kind of that deciding factor or what did that choice look like for you? Yeah, 
So my my partner, my boyfriend, um, had a unique opportunity to to be elsewhere for work this summer. That was really close to nature, and they gave him a house, and it was it was really beautiful. And at the beginning of the summer, it also meant we'd be apart for three months, which we're used to for, for our schedule. But it at the beginning of the summer, I was like, okay, let me make a perfect schedule, like when I'm going to go visit it and I'll like work really hard when I'm in the city and then like go visit him and like tune out, which at the time was kind of where I was at. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. But as the summer just started to unfold and things shifted in my business that just, it, it worked, but it also didn't where I things got really, really slow of my in, in person stuff. So the need for me to be in the city for like one client to uh, on Thursday night, just outweighed my need to be in nature and mental health. And especially I think, since the pandemic started as a small business owner, I was just go, go, go. And even when I like, I remember two, last summer, I like took a week to go to my parents. And so everything was virtual still at the time, but I still worked the whole week. So I never took a, any time off during the pandemic because it was like, oh, the computer's right in front of me. Like, we'll just, we'll do virtual stuff. We'll do virtual physical therapy, all that. So this summer, I think I kind of just hit a breaking point. And then also a lot of my clients, I work with some professors and people who travel and they finally had the opportunity to travel. So they were like, hey, we need to break from the screens. Like we're, we're going screen free for the whole summer or hey, we actually can see our family for the first time. I'm going to go spend a month with my grandkids. So I had a lot of those things coming up as I was also feeling like something's got to give. So I really just, instead of freaking out, that's a lie, I freaked out a little bit probably, but (laughs) (laughs) naturally, yeah, instead of freaking out and worrying so much about like, okay, I have to work. I have to make X amount of money. I have to do these things. I was like, let me just take advantage of this opportunity to live in a beautiful house that it's 10 minutes from 10 minutes from my favorite hiking trail, 10 minutes from a lake. Let me soak all that in because right now I could force my business and hate it, which I never want. And I could force it and still feel like I have nothing to show for it. Or I can soak in this opportunity to be in nature, really deeply heal myself so that when the fall enters, I can enter back with that new fresh energy as well. And it just kind of aligned perfectly too that I was inspired to create my Nourish Your Nervous System course, which required me to nourish my nervous system a lot. So it was all, it was a struggle. It was was hard. I I, I keep saying this on the summer. I was like, it was a hard summer because of, you know, the driving and because of having to let go of financial expectations, but it was exactly what needed to happen for my nervous system. And I think for me to be able to really tackle this fall with a freshness and a newness. Yeah. And you would say that you're feeling fresh and new going into fall because of that. Yeah. A hundred percent. I didn't, you know, I didn't really realize how fresh and new until like after labor day and I spent like a full day in my office for the first time. I was like, wow, this feels really good to be here, like to be back oh. here. And I don't regret taking the time away this summer, but it feels really darn good to be sitting in my office and answer emails. <laughs> like, and, and emails can be the death of me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, I love that so much, especially just for you, just in witnessing your journey and also being, you know, a bit a part of it and everything and just seeing you feeling your intuition, knowing like, Hey, I really, I really want that. Like I'm, I need the nature. Like it was so much less of a want and was more of that. Like, I need this. And then you really played with it and you sat with it and you worked with it. And like, you've just been moving and flowing and making decisions for you and for your best interest. And based on how you're going to feel first and foremost, And then it's like the ripple effect of what you've received from that has just been like rapid fire. And it is just such a beautiful testament of truly listening because it wasn't easy, especially as a business owner. I mean, really anyone like taking a quote unquote financial loss or not looking to the financial gain is so hard to do. And especially when, you know, it's like, I should be at my computer, but then you really have to push yourself and it's like, nope, I'm going to go 
take this hike. And then I can let you speak to this, but then probably during that hike, you had creative energy and then you created this nourish your nervous system course. And it's like, your life is just fully flowing compared to being in that state of force where you might've been feeling more forceful kind of before that. And I, I will have to say, you know, you alluded to it, but we've been working together. I forget how long now, maybe like six, I started working with six yeah, months maybe. I think um, so. And, you know, that was a really intuitive decision on both our ends to kind of work, you know, have you as a guide to help me kind of on this healing journey. And I, and I, in the beginning of the summer, not knowing that this was the journey I was going to go on, I did invest in like working with you and working with a, you know, kind of a small group to like support my healing process and also to support my business. And I think I didn't know it at the time, but if I didn't have that support in place to be like, Hey, this is like where I'm at, I'm going to make these decisions. And not that I needed the permission from someone else to be like, yeah, you're right. But just the support of like, okay, what are you really, what is your body really asking you? What are, what is really going on here? Um, I don't think I could have made the decisions without that support. And that's why I'll always be an advocate for either having a coach or having, you know, being a part of a mastermind or something like that, because I used to think that, oh, I don't have the money to, to do that sort of thing. And I don't have, I don't have the energy or the time to not do that sort of thing. If that makes sense, like mm -hmm. you get, I get so much value out of it. Um, you know, especially working with you and, and I love the way that we've worked together. Cause it's not just one thing that's like, cause I'm not just one thing, <laughs> yeah. but I think, I think in this healing journey, that's one thing I've learned even this summer, like even within in, in the past, I've definitely had coaches before and I haven't always asked for as much support as I needed. And our relationship, I feel comfortable being like, Hey, this is where I'm at today. Like, can you support me here? And that's really beautiful. And I think when you're on a deep healing journey and we've talked about it before, but our, your biz, my business and my healing journey are really intertwined and it's really helpful to have support. And it becomes easier, in my opinion, at least, to start to trust your intuition when someone's supporting you, even just energetically in the wings. Yeah, 100%. I think that's what is so cool about having just really, we can even call it like community, like coaches, small group programs. You know, if it is you have a foundational group of friends or family that, you know, you're on the same wavelength with or a partner or whatever it is. It's like having that other person to uncover our blind spots or maybe see things we're not seeing or be that level of accountability is just so pivotal to me in truly getting to where we want to go. And then we start like picking up off of each other's energy and we get to celebrate each other. And I'm sure it's the same with your clients and your work as well, where it's like, yeah, I could, maybe I'll say like, find the YouTube videos, but like, that's not going to be as supportive as working one-on-one -on -one or like finding the posts on Instagram or, okay, I watch the podcast. I listen to the podcast or watch the Instagram live. And it's like, we definitely are in this era of like, we have so much where we can learn and gain independently. However, the missing piece is that human connection. And I just think human connection is like so valuable. 100%. I think even especially after this past year, I mean, hmm. you know, uh, the, the nerd in me wants to tie this back to the nervous system. So I'll yeah, gonna, let's I'm do it bring that back around. Like we are as a human being, as that, that sort of species, we are wired for community. You know, if you think back to when people were first on this earth, like it was very community based. And if you didn't have a community, then you... <laughs> would probably die. <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's, that's like, you know, I'm talking like hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of years ago, but if you were shunned from your community, your likelihood of surviving was really low and our nervous systems are still wired for that. I do a lot of work with the polyvagal theory and the vagus nerve, um, Dr. Stephen Porges's work, which is amazing if you haven't looked into it uh, among others, but he was really the, the spearhead for that. And a lot of the work talks about our social engagement system and our social engagement system is how we interact with the world. It's what we see, the facial expressions we make, our voice, how we talk, 
even the muscles in our neck, how we move them to orient ourselves to the space around. Of course, I'm over here like turning my head, even though you're, we're on a podcast. But, um, you know, your social engagement system is how we interact with the world. And it's really important for regulating our nervous system. Even one of the things my uh, one of my clinical mentors when I was doing some more of this nervous system work to practice is just practice making different facial expressions with your face. So like smile and then frown and then pout and just watching yourself make the different things like that is quote unquote exercising your social engagement system, which feeds back into your vagus nerve, which helps better regulate your nervous system. So and part of that too is we are wired to read other people's facial expressions. We're wired to like listen to intonation, to like look at someone and, and, and be able to assess where they're at. Cause that's important for our survival too. Like if someone's coming down you on, a sh on the street and you see their face, like you're subconsciously already trying to figure out like, are they a threat or not? You're trying to figure that out. And, um, it wires us to like search for people who have friendly faces, who create that community. So not only is community important, I think for our personal development, our personal growth, but it's also really important for nervous system regulation. And I think this past year and a half or so with people isolating themselves, rightfully so in the beginning at least, because the pandemic, I think it's starting to be a harmful behavior of people isolating themselves. And it's, it's, causing a lot of nervous system dysregulation, a lot of pain, a lot of illness, a lot of mental health issues. And it's, um, community is important. It's really important. Wow. That is so cool. I'm always down to like fully nerd out on this stuff, especially when talking about the body, because it's just so fascinating. I mean, it's really, it's just these ancient principles and honoring the ancientness of our bodies. Like our bodies haven't really changed that much. And as it looks to our own health and well being, and I mean, I'm myself fall prey to like overcomplicating things all the time, but it's really just these basic pillars, which is so cool. I know over the summer, not to put you on the spot, but I just thought they were so beautiful when I read them, you created or kind of like molded within your business, a few different pillars of live good, feel good. Would you want mind sharing some of those with us? Because I think they're so wonderful. Not at all. I'm like afraid I'm going to forget one, but I, I, think I know I was like, I, this would like really <laughs> overwhelm me if somebody asked me this. So <laughs> you're like deeply ingrained at this point. Um, so yeah, you know, I wrote these, I want a little backstory. I had written kind of the five pillars of live good, feel good when I first started my business in August of 2019. And, and a lot of them stayed the same, but the way I viewed them were, were different just because of how I have evolved. So as I'm a physical therapist and a yoga instructor, like I don't just do physical therapy or just do yoga. It's a little bit just different. This is all I got right now. <laughs> so it was, it was a way for me to express like the work that I do with people and the views that I have on wellness. So, um, one of them is movement as medicine. So we kind of touched on that a, a little bit, like the idea of finding what is fueling you now and letting that change cyclically. I mean, even as women, letting it change with your menstrual cycle, letting it change with the moon cycles, letting it change with the seasons, letting it change with your nervous system, so really finding that movement of medicine, movement as medicine where you are like right now, that's one of them. Um, number two is going to be nourish your nervous system. So really anyone who walks in my door or anyone that even walks in my yoga class, like my first thing I want to do is, is make sure we can get your nervous system in a state where you feel comfortable moving and getting, you know, I do some massage techniques, getting my hands on you, because if your nervous system isn't in the state to receive that healing, you're not going to be able to truly heal. So doing whether it be hands-on work or breath work or meditation to get people to drop into that healing state of the nervous system, super important. And then also encouraging people to nourish their nervous system outside of their time with me um, is equally as important. And then Number three is mother nature heals. I mm. literally tell every client I work with, like get your feet in the dirt, get outside, go for a walk, like whatever iteration works for where they are at their, in their healing journey. But I think it is so integral to bring mother nature into 
the healing process and yeah even even healing pain process like whether that be i work with a lot of chronic pain getting out mother nature is essential um so that's number three and then a breath body and soul as one is is kind of the fifth mm -hmm. one and that really is more of that kind of energetic piece of the work i do um i i do have my reiki one and two certification and i am pretty in tune with the energetics around me and I think it's really important to not necessarily like not everyone's going to be as in tune it's something that you have to obviously practice and cultivate as you know but to recognize that energy is all around us that everything we do is energy that everything we experience is energy that every thought we put out into the world is energy and that's really really important for just our health and our, our healing process and if we don't respect that and that even like our breath itself is energy and that's yeah. really important too um and i'm gonna have to look this up because now it's bothering me i can't remember the fifth one um oh obviously wow I, i'm embarrassed i forgot this one mind body connection because <laughs> <laughs> that's i literally talk about it every day but you know just this idea that our mind and our body are not separate from another so especially when it comes to healing pain. I work, like I said, I've worked with a lot of people with chronic pain and chronic stress and quite often, not all the time, but quite often when people in chronic pain experience an influx in their pain symptoms, it has to do not with like what is physically wrong with their body, but with what else is going on in their life, whether that be like emotional health, mental health, spiritual health, things like that. So recognizing that your lifestyle affects your body. And then also on the same realm like your body can affect your mind too i saw i'm not sure if you saw this or around but the parent trap um the lindsay lohan one is like one of my favorite movies as a kid Same. and there was a funny meme going around the internet that was like the two twins um and it was like um am i anxious because i'm bloated or am i bloated because i'm anxious <laughs> and like <laughs> to me i was like this is hilarious because this is just like this is the epitome of mind body connection because it could be either like and getting to know like what it is that you know and that can be said for a lot of different emotions a lot of different things but am i anxious because i'm bloated or am i bloated because i'm anxious and i was just cracking up but mind body connection <laughs> that's so funny i so relate to that for sure <laughs> right. speaking of that mind body connection when we're looking at you and your journey and just where we sit right now, I mean, it again, just kind of circles back to like you making that intentional choice for yourself this summer. And then just, you can just see, you can feel your energy as we're talking about energy, like any energy is everything. Like you can completely just see the way your mind body connection is fully working right here, right now, simply by following these five pillars by electing to put yourself first, by also like electing to make decisions on behalf of you and behalf of your business and trying to just like fully align things in the best way possible, but also align them from a place that like feels good to you and that you can step forward and be your best in. And I think, I think it's always been, a, it's a learning process, right? Like it's never going to be perfect. I mean, I had the example of just yesterday where I was going to take an extra, um, you know, position, just doing a kind of a contract work and because it was good money and, you know, all those things that you look at when you're considering something. And then I just sat with it and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is not what I want to do at all. And I do credit that to a lot to the work we've done together and being able to honestly say that, okay, yeah, it's good money, but really is it worth the stress and, and honoring that, Yes, like that, that, or say that, no, it's not worth it, but you know, it's a process still, right? Like I still had to go through that process of being like, oh, I'm going to do this thing. Cause like, it's whatever it will, it'll be, it'll be good in the short term. And like, but then it was like, well, wait a second, pump the brakes. Did I just, did I start my own business to be miserable again, to take a contract position that doesn't like, did I go through this past year of a pandemic or did I start to hone these skills of intuition, of listening to myself, of listening to body, all these things I preach and I truly believe to then just push that all to the side because like, oh, the money is good or like, oh, it's just a short term contract. So it's still a process for me. I, I think I've come a long way. I do. I, I will give myself that credit, but there's still tests and still 
ways that I'm reminded of, okay, you really need to continue to strengthen this intuition muscle. You really need to strengthen this inner knowing because when you do listen to it, it's beautiful. But when you don't, it's it, it can be really hard and, and really sucky. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that situation for a second. Yeah. So, because I know so many of us can relate to that where you felt like, okay, this maybe we'll call it like logically makes sense. So to say you acted on it, then you got to a place where you were like, Oh shit. Like this actually feels like a no. However, past you or past me, other people probably still would have forced and been like, no, but I have to do this or I should do this. However, that no felt like a no. And you honored that no, and actually acted on saying no instead of yes. How did that feel for you by honoring that no? So I want to start with first how it felt before I didn't say the no. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really had come to, had actually accepted the position and there was a couple of hoops I had to jump through to really fully accept it. And I was kind of coming to the end of those hoops and the whole morning yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday, um, I just this pit in my stomach and I was like, oh, something is not right. Like... I don't, I don't know. I feel off and I've, I had been feeling pretty good, you know, kind of, like I said, the freshness of fall, like, and it's almost like when you get used to listening to your intuition and something comes off, it is a little louder than it used to be, at least for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will also like to give credit where credit's due. Like I have the support, uh, endless support from my parents, from my partner and from my coaches like you. So I did, you know, I was, I was on the phone with my mom when I was having these feelings. So that was helpful to talk it through with someone else and be like, this is how I'm feeling. And this is like, I feel like I should take this position, but I also have zero desire to, and I will give her credit. She was said something to me, like, what'd she say? She said something like, well, right now, all your energy really needs to be going into like your business and building the one that you want. So if you think this opportunity is going to help you get there, then go for it. But if it's not, then like, why bother? <laughs> and she was like, why bother? And I was like, why bother? I don't know. But it was one of those things where like, she wasn't really meaning to be so profound, but it was profound. Moms um, always know best. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was great. Love my mom. Um, and so then I was like, you know what? screw it. I'm not doing it. And I called and I was like, Hey, I'm so sorry. Something came up. I'm no longer able to accept this position. I really, you know, very kindly was like, kindly said, fuck no. <laughs> Just my language. Very kindly without those words. But, um, I felt like I was floating on a cloud afterwards. I was like, Oh my gosh, like, let's do this, Carrie. Let's harness all this energy. Like I was feeling so good. Like I could have gone dancing through the streets. I could have cried. I was so happy. And I think part of it was also listening to myself for like feeling like I've listened to myself and honored myself. And then it honestly sparked me to do a couple things in my business too, that I'd been putting off. So since I was no longer taking this position, that was going to have X amount of money coming in. I was like, all right, you know what, let's get on some of those things that you've been putting off. Let's put that workshop out there. Let's get yourself organized. Let's make a budget for this, you know, this month and next month, let's, let's put some of those ideas, let's write them out, things like that. So I was so happy to make that, but then also realistic in the fact that I was like, okay, since you're not taking this position, what does that open up time and space for? And how do we harness that too? I love that so much. And then just to like riff off of that, you are then also acting and creating in a place of a super aligned and high vibe energy. Exactly. So naturally you were truly creating from the heart. So, you know, whatever came from that time period is just going to be so beneficial to you, your clients, the collective, the world, like all of it, it all just comes round and round and in exchange. So it's so, so cool. Thank you for sharing that because it's tough. Like it is really, really tough, but the more that you start putting yourself first and really listening to yourself and also getting to a place where you can clearly listen to yourself too, because, you know, oftentimes we can live just the veil can be a little cloudy for sure. So yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm. I love that for anyone who is listening, who is maybe considering 
whether investing in a coach or a workshop, a course like what you have, you know, sometimes spending money on ourselves can feel like a really daunting task. Like, you know, we can go blow, not blow, choose to spend money at, at a restaurant or at food on food. It's like, Oh, go drop whatever amount on groceries, like no brainer. And then when it comes to investing in something, it's like, Oh, this feels so tough. And, you know, we've talked a lot about money between the two of us and just that whole relationship. But do you have any advice having been the fact that you put forth the effort, made the investment into yourself. Do you have any advice for anyone who is kind of considering making that investment or that choice right now? I mean, I think it's scary. And I think for me, it's always come from a place of like lack of worth where Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well I'm conditioned and also conditioning. Like I'm conditioned, like it's normal, quote unquote, to spend money on alcohol, to spend money on food, to go out all these things. And it's normalized in our society. And so the idea of then putting money into ourselves is like, oh, well, I don't don't really quote unquote need that. Or like the deeper for me, I think was always, I'm not worthy of that. Like, why would I invest in myself? I'm not worthy of that. And I think that's even more of a sign that it is worth the investment because for me, I couldn't get out of that that loop, if you will, without having invested money and, and without having that support and without really honoring and showing up. And I think, you know, I love a good journal prompt the same as the next person. I love writing. I love doing all the personal development stuff. I really do. And, but the accountability of having someone else who's like, okay, hey, we're going to check in on all those things and see where you're at and, and support you. I think that is more beneficial than sometimes the work itself. (laughs) It just, it's hard to do this work on yourself. It's hard to stay committed when things get tough without having a support system there. Get the money can be hard and it can be scary. And you're like, I don't know where it comes from, but it's just another level of trusting yourself at the end of the day, I think, and honoring yourself. Um, like I know you, you know, we've talked about before. It's like, okay, do I have a cappuccino and that bottle of wine, or do I need to really learn to sit with my emotions and just and trust it and believe that I'm worthy of an investment? Yes, mm, love that. Well said. Well, where can people find you to connect further and? just keep following your journey. And even, I mean, I would highly recommend checking out nourish your nervous system when it relaunches because it looks amazing. So my business name is live good, feel good. Um, my name is uh, Carrie McGinn, but on Instagram, I'm at live good underscore feel good underscore. And then my website is carrymegan.com. So they're different um, at the moment. And then most of my stuff is on Instagram or on my website. I have a newsletter that goes out with lots of fun tips set on how to nourish your nervous system and all the updates. And I will be relaunching nourish your nervous system. Actually, this is the first time I'm sharing it because I just decided it yesterday in my kind of divine, um, divine intuition moment. I'm going to be relaunching it in January for a new cohort. And I'm so excited, the freshness of the new year and just the support after the holiday season. Um, and I will share with you, Brett, a little code for all your listeners. Um, we can put that in the show notes um, because it's just um, an honor to be on this podcast and to share this work with the world. So yeah, January, stay tuned for Nourish Your Nervous System. But I share a lot of those tips over on my Instagram and my newsletter so that if you're like, I need it now, that's where you can find all the good stuff. Cool. Love it so much. Well, as you know, we end all of our episodes with some loving your own soul questions. So if you're ready, we can jump into those. Yes. Always love these. (laughs) All right, cool. Who is someone inspiring that is inspiring you either right now or just even like who have been inspirational teachers in your journey? That's a great question. Um, Right now, really into a lot of the mother nature work, like books and stuff I've been reading. Um, And there is this actually writer who's um, an outdoor leader guide who's out in the Berkshires. I'm going to, I might butcher his name, but Micah Mort. 
Kelly. Um, he has a book called Rewilding, and that really inspired my journey this summer and led me to a couple other really great books. So there's, I'm sure there's plenty of other people, but that was kind of my jam this summer, getting inspired through Mother Nature. Cool. I love that. You mentioned earlier you have a garden and if people follow you on Instagram, if they don't already, they can see all your fun photos in the city. Yeah. Do you have a favorite vegetable or element of your garden? Ooh, element for sure. Um, my calendula is my favorite. It's prolific and I have all different colors this year and I made and, lo- and uh, body oils with it. So that's really fun. The calendula is my favorite element. My favorite vegetable, oh, this is a good one, cucumelons. Have you ever had cucumelons? <gasps> no, but I've seen them from you. Yeah, they're like <laughs> little, they're cucumbers that look like watermelons, but like they're the size of like your thumb. Those are also perfect prolific this year. If anyone's in Boston and wants to try some cucumelons, come on by because I literally have a gallon of them in my fridge. Like I have so many. We made five jars of pickles this weekend and I still probably have the ability to make like four or five more jars. That's how many there are. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Delicious. I'm jealous. That's amazing. <laughs> As we're talking about nature, if you were a flower, what type of flower do you think you would be? Ooh. I'd have to say a zinnia or a calla lily. Calla lily. Calla lily. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. Calla lily is a really special flower for me. Special, it's fun yeah. that you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite way to nourish or support your body, physical body? Right now, daily walks, gen- daily gentle walks. I try to aim for fif- at least 15 to 30 minutes a day. Um, that feels like the most nourishing thing at the moment. Dude, walking is like so underrated. I swear. So underrated. <laughs> I picked it up. I picked it up. Like it's a sport. Like it's something I had to relearn, but I like Chris and I got back into it in the pandemic because we had a lot more free time and we just go for like hour long walks along our neighborhood. And it's just been an element that I've been loving to keep in as, you know, as I continue on in this post pandemic world. Of that. What is something most people don't know about you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, also that you're comfortable sharing publicly. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's a couple of things. I think more, I'm going to share two because one of them is funny and one of them's So a lot of people that I've met recently kind of in my current iteration of where I am in my life don't know that um, Chris and I, my boyfriend, within eight months of dating each other, we went, we built out a sprinter van and went on a cross country road trip after only knowing each other eight months. And then we proceeded to go on multiple cross country road trips in our van, Betty, um, which was absolutely amazing and life changing. Um, And I feel like not a lot of people know that now. And then another one is I was uh, born with a fun one is I was born with a genetic anomaly where I'm missing. Um, actually, people probably on my Instagram know this now because I put my feet all over, but I'm missing um, toenails on my toes and a lot of the joints in my toes. So as a movement professional, it's always really interesting um, and like a fun fact that not everyone always sees when they first see me. But I it's a genetic anomaly that I love about myself. So it's never it's it's a joyful one not a, and a curious one, if you will. It it keeps me curious about the human body. (laughs) Yeah. I love that you said it's joyful. That's so special. (laughs) In your ideal world, what does a slow morning look like to you? Oh, I've been thinking about this one a lot lately. Um, I do enjoy being up early, especially in the city, you know, not like crazy early, but I like being up with the sun, especially in the city, because it's quieter. I like that quiet before anyone else, even in the house, wakes up. Um, But really, ideally, it would be waking up, going outdoors with a cup of lemon water. I'm I'm on the lemon water chain and just sitting outside and breathing for a bit. And then doing my journaling practice. I do like a card pull, gratitude journaling, just some like brain dump stuff. Um, I always like to like to light incense or, um, I grow sage in my garden. I'll, I'll light that sometimes, whether it be a walk or a workout, just something to move my yoga, something to move my body. 
and then a really big fun nourishing breakfast um feels luxurious right now i made french toast like for chris and i this weekend anyway uh it just a big breakfast feels nourishing before i kind of get on with my day so that would kind of be ideal world is a little bit of all that Mm, sounds so lovely i feel you i'm a huge breakfast fan it's like i think it might be my favorite meal of the day it just i think so too i'd much rather cook it too chris always makes fun of me because i'm not especially i do work late sometimes till seven or eight o'clock and so cooking a big dinner isn't always where my energy is at but like uh, like cooking a big breakfast or having a big smoothie it's just like i could be so creative for breakfast in the morning and then like for dinner have like just like a salad and call it. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I can honestly go as simple as like a bowl of rice right. <laughs> with tamari exactly. and like avocado. So yeah, Same. Same. for sure. <laughs> uh, well, final question. Yeah. What does loving your own soul mean to you? Oh, this will be interesting because I have no clue what I said last time. On the podcast. So I, you actually, it actually, I changed the question a little bit for you. <laughs> so I was like, I wonder what I said. So loving your own soul to me, it really means, you know, it means really starting to listen to myself and trusting myself and doing the things that I know are good for myself and not just good from like an outside perspective, but like soul nourishing stuff. And I feel like when I'm loving my own soul, I am taking the actions that I know set my soul on fire that I know fuel me that I know nourish me um and it's something that I really truly thrive for like I want to live a life where I feel deeply nourished I feel deeply intuitive and I love truly love my own soul and therefore do the things that I know keep me in that state and keep me in that place Mm. Well, you are certainly on the road there. That is for sure. (laughs) Carrie, thank you so much. This was so fun. Welcome back for round two. And yeah, just thank you for everything. Always such a joy hanging and talking with you. Thank you for everything as well. I'm so grateful the podcast brought us together and I'm grateful we got to do another one. This is so fun. (laughs) All right. What an incredible episode. I mean, oh, Carrie, just thank you so much. I have truly just so enjoyed sharing space and just getting to know Carrie over this last year, which it really does feel as if we have known each other so much longer than that. I'm just so grateful for this wild time that we live in. And as always, if you feel inspired and enjoyed today's conversation, I would be so honored to have you rate and review the show. Your ratings and reviews mean so much to me and our wonderful guests. And in return, they really help me to grow the show and continue bringing on more incredible souls. Plus, I please be sure to drop in on Instagram, say hi, let me know what you are enjoying about the show, definitely send over any guest or topic recommendations, would love to hear from you. You can find me at the Brit Olson. and yeah, come say hi. Let's continue this connection and just continue sharing in community together. Thank you again, as always, for tuning in for being here. Thank you, Carrie, for holding space with us. And I so look forward to continuing the journey with you all again soon.